Dear friends and partners of the Department of Economics, dear audience, why do we need research? This is a question that comes up time and time again, especially when it comes to funding science. And yes, science is expensive. However, more than ever before, the current corona pandemic shows how important sound scientific insights are for solving the problems of the modern world. The pandemic shows that we need the medical sciences to help those who become ill and we need modern biology to develop effective vaccines. However, we also need the behavioral sciences like economics to solve the problem because in the end almost all problems are also behavioral problems. That is, we need to change people's behavior. To give you an example, how does a vaccine help? if many people do not want to get vaccinated? How can we induce companies and people to behave responsibly and help prevent the spread of the virus? These are also, in their core, economic questions that demand sound knowledge about the drivers of human behavior and about how one can change them. Moreover, similar questions come up in the context of all major global problems such as globalization, digitalization, companies with enormous market power, or the problem of mitigating inequality, poverty and climate change. The solution to all these problems requires deep changes in our institutions and our behaviors. In other words, they require insights from economics. The Department of Economics at the University of Zurich is dedicated to this kind of scientific research. We do this with our currently 37 professors who work on a wide variety of topics that are related to the above mentioned global problems in one way or another. In the following three videos, we would like to offer you a glimpse of insight into the research at our department. We have selected three research areas that cover issues of poverty and development, of trade and globalization and of behavioral economics. They are represented through portraits of nine selected scientists. The focus is on the individual researchers and their passion for science. And the videos reflect the wide range and interdisciplinarity of research topics at the department. Enjoy diving into the world of economics. A large share of the world poverty is in Sub-Saharan Africa. And so as a social scientist, since the beginning of my studying, I thought that this was an area where applying some of our knowledge, applying some of the advancements of economics and applied economics could lead to large benefits. I think that as a researcher, we need to communicate to a wide audience the importance of what we do. And in particular, we need to explain that the results that we provide with our studies, with our evaluations, can inform policy making. I would hope that in the next few years, next few decades, local researchers can use the methods and the knowledge that they acquire in cooperation with researchers from other countries, not just transfer of information and knowledge from the north to the south, but also from the south to the north. There are at least two key steps that I see for the future. One, becoming even better in communicating the results of research to a broad audience of policymakers and development practitioners. Second, making an even stronger effort in involving local researchers in these evaluation activities. I think that the University of Zurich has made tremendous progress in becoming a top player, a frontier player, in the study of development economics. I started working on economics from a perspective of how low- and middle-income countries can improve their public policies. 
I work with governments, institutions, with tax authorities, uh, with public agencies, but also with large firms where we do research together on very concrete questions. In economics, we have new methods nowadays where we can really study concretely how public policies work and specific ways to improve them. Tax collection is a very challenging task for any government. We currently work on a project with the Chilean Tax Authority where we study whether the measures that the OECD has introduced to reduce tax shifting by multinational corporations are effective. I was born in the right family, with the right access. It made a huge difference to me, that, but uh, not all children had the same luck as I did back then. And this is unfair. So a huge motivation for my work is to try to make these basic opportunities less and equal, such that regardless of where you're born or what your gender is, the color of your skin, you should have access to the same um, future in fulfilling your potential as a human being. You know, we're currently test things based on what works on average. But the truth is, every kid is different. And in the modern world, we're talking more and more about how artificial intelligence will help you know, customize the approach to every child. This can also be done in poor countries. You only have to be smart about what technologies you use, how you collect data. And now, you know, things like these harmful social norms, child marriage, uh, female labor participation, these are now, you know, core issues that economists are discussing. So maybe they relabel things and they don't call it human rights, but they call it economic opportunities. Great. There's more people thinking about those issues and we're trying to look at them at a, from a different angle because of the different way that we look at the problem. Standard economic theory has long assumed that our decisions are driven by rationality and by calculations of trade-offs and utility. And that is part of what drives us, but we are so much more complex. And we need to understand how exactly our emotional influences, the mistakes that we make, guide our behavior and lead us to make certain types of choices. That's probably a better way of thinking our, about our decision making, where there's many influences, many channels, they're all coming together and combining in, in ways that are sometimes surprising, sometimes unexpected, and sometimes that we really don't understand well in order to produce the choices that we ultimately make. One potential positive impact is what we do as consumers. So when we go buy products, we potentially might care about the degree to which one product costs more, but has a positive impact on society. And when do we choose to make that purchasing decision? My personal vision for the work I do is that it can help us better understand these types of altruistic and ethical motivations that we have as individuals, whether it's as consumers or as members of society or when we're working, um, and how these can be harnessed as a way of producing positive social impacts. My aim is to better understand how to improve the conditions for children so they can flourish in childhood and in adulthood. We want to understand what is the causal effect of breastfeeding on child development, mother's well-being and more broadly family dynamics. My research agenda on breastfeeding is highly relevant in terms of understanding what might be the potential cost for maternal well-being when they breastfeed. My vision for the future is to better understand important windows in child development 
where do we need to do certain interventions and in turn that might improve child development. So these are all open questions. We are surrounded by errors. We all know from our personal experience that many times we are not satisfied with our decisions, that we make mistakes. Our brain is a biological machine which has automatized a lot of behaviors. And that frees cognitive resources which allow us to do other more interesting things. That's what we call deliberation. It's the confluence between automatic process and deliberation which makes us human beings. I think that we should discuss the role of interdisciplinarity in economics. Economics has taken insights from psychology leading to the birth of behavioral economics and has started taking insights from neuroscience, which has led to the development of neuroeconomics. We need to understand how brain processes influence those decisions, and we need to understand what neuroscience is telling us about how we should improve our economic models. Some of my research studies tremendous change that took place in international trade over the last several decades. And that is the emergence of China as the world leading producer of manufactured goods. And that in turn meant that the countries in Europe or the United States were facing very rapid increases in import competition that led some uh, firms and some industries to decline sharply and then also had big impacts on workers. We can look at the way in which globalization or technological change shifts the distribution of incomes in the economy. We can study groups of the population who have fallen behind in our societies and also the emergence of uh, political extremism, all of which are topics that I study in my research. The challenge going forward is how can we, on the one hand, leverage uh, all the benefits that trade can provide, while at the same time avoiding some of the economic and social ills that trade has brought in the last decades. Trade is uh, at the same time incredibly simple and incredibly uh, complex, just like this uh, wonderful facility that, that we are witnessing. I mean, the World Trade Organization has two main functions. Uh, one is to prevent uh, trade wars, and the other one is to um, promote further trade talks. And in principle, you know, those are, those are noble objectives, I think. The problem is uh, that at the moment, the WTO really fails to deliver on uh, both these fronts, which is why uh, we are really in an existential uh, crisis here. What we need to explore is uh, really how important trade was for the growth of China, for example, and what it really meant in terms of lifting hundreds of uh, millions of people out of poverty, and one that other developing countries could also try to imitate, try to emulate, to also uh, join the club and become uh, prosperous economies. So at the moment, my mission is to try to understand deep trade agreements, to really try to understand what modern trade agreements are about, because frankly, um, I think there's a huge gap in our knowledge. We don't know whether these modern trade agreements work or not. We don't know what works, and this is a debate I want to contribute to, and I think that's a really uh, important debate. Companies and firms and workers make products differently uh, today than they did 20 or 30 years ago. 
So we have these outdated ideas in our minds that a firm would make a product from start to finish, from inputs through all the component parts and the final good produced in one place. But the fact of the matter is, products are made in the world. And this raises new policy challenges and new policy opportunities. So there's always this temptation to address policy or to respond in firm decisions to things that have happened in the past. But governments need to be thinking about the future. I would like to see a conversation about new challenges to the global trading system. There are many, and these are serious problems. And as much as we might think and hope that governments will have all of the solutions, they won't. And individual firms, individual communities have to help come together to find new and creative solutions. So I want to talk about what firms can do, what individual governments can do, and what governments can do together through institutions like the WTO. I hope this glimpse into the work of our researchers has shown you how diverse economics is and how topical and crucial the current research at the department is. At this point, I would like to emphasize that a large part of this research would not be possible without the support of various partners and donors. It is only through collaboration with you, through collaboration with our partners, that the department has been able to position itself among the world's top 20 economics departments over the past 10 years. A success story beyond compare. A big thank you goes to all of our partners and donors. Thank you for accompanying and joining us on this journey. Thank you for being part of our community. We are grateful for your interest and your support. But instead of resting on the laurels of the past, we move forward, building on what we have achieved so far and continuing to advance research in numerous areas in the spirit of pioneering economics, creating economics and shaping society for the better. This is an undertaking for which we need strong partnerships, both in existing and new areas. Together, dear friends and partners, together we can make an impact.